If you're anything like me, and I'm betting that you are, you have an unfinished project pile that is stacked sky high. Have you ever taken a second to consider why that happens? If I look at all of my unfinished projects, they're all pretty much unfinished for one of two reasons. The first is that I either didn't plan it well enough, so it didn't progress in the way that I wanted to. And the second is that I just dreamt too big. I wanted to create a project that was just large and that I was able to commit to. Fortunately, there's some simple things you can do to ensure that you're not adding any new unfinished projects to that pile. So this is how to plan a software project for success. Now keep in mind these steps do assume that you already have an idea on what you want to make. If you don't even know what to make at all, I can't really help you with that in this video. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to pretend like my idea for a new software project is a website that lets you go buy coffee beans online. So now that I have my idea, the first step is going to be brainstorm ideas about your idea. If you have a whiteboard, now is the time to break it out. Otherwise, you can use a piece of paper that works too. But the whole point here is just to get ideas down in a place that you can see and figure out how you want to proceed. And feel free to write anything and everything in this stage because in step two, we're going to work to reduce those down to something manageable. So if I was brainstorming ideas about a coffee bean website, I'd be writing things down like coffee bean suggestion, you know, registration forms, checkout, e-commerce, and so on. You know, maybe I also want a place for the most purchased coffee bean, and then a place for people to upload pictures where they're taking selfies with their coffee beans. I don't know. So now that you have some ideas for your project, step two, and this is the most important step of this entire thing, is from those ideas, decide on a attainable early end goal. Now attainable in this case means two things. First, it means something that you are capable skill-wise of doing. And second, it means something that you are capable time-wise of doing. And so at this point, you're taking all those ideas from the brainstorming phase and you're removing a lot of them that can't fit into the first version. And this is where people make a ton of mistakes is they tell themselves, and I've done this too, I say, yes, I want to work on this for maybe a month or two, but then I plan out 12 months worth of work. And that's just a big lie I'm telling myself because when I get to two months down the road and I still have 10 months left, I'm just going to add that project to the dead software pile. I promise you with 100% certainty that having a small thing that's 100% done is way better than having a huge thing that is 10% done. So in the context of my coffee bean website, unless it is searching for coffee beans or buying coffee beans, I don't need to be doing it for the first end goal. The thing that kills most projects, I think, is what I like to call the 99% problem. And essentially what the 99% problem is, is it's when it takes you a month to finish 99% of your project, but then it takes another month to finish 99.5% of your project. And then from there, it's just this asymptote where you're constantly getting closer to 100%, but you never actually get there. And really the smaller your end goal is the better because as you build out your project you are invariably going to have to add something new to it as you go something that you're not going to be aware of in the planning stage and you're still going to have to account for that okay so if you've made it through the brainstorming phase and you have some ideas and you know a good end goal in mind from here it gets a little bit easier so step three is going to be determine the appropriate tech stack for the thing you want to build so what you do in this step is kind of based on what your skill level is. If you know a bunch of different technology, then you have some options to choose what works best. Of course, some of you may just know one thing, and in which case you're just going to use that. But if you do know a wider range of things, make sure you take advantage of that, because there are particular pieces of technology that are better at solving specific problems than other things. And the whole point of learning a ton of different technologies for this exact situation. So for my Coffee Bean website, perhaps I'll use Node.js, Express, MySQL, HTML, CSS, Less, React, the usual suspects. Step four is all about databases. If your project involves a database, then you need to design that schema early. The biggest mistake that you can make with databases is designing the database as you go without thinking about it. There's always going to be unavoidable changes to your schema, but you want to look at what your project is and you want to design out all of the tables and the relationships up front. It's going to make designing your code and then also the integration with your database a lot easier. It's also going to minimize the number of database changes down the road. I see people screw this up all the time because databases are very difficult to change later on down the road. This is especially true if you have millions of records and you have to change it later. I assure you it's very painful and you want to avoid it if you can. Step five is to identify any third-party tools that you could possibly use to speed up the process of building your project. It's completely okay to use third-party tools. Don't get wrapped around the axle on you needing to build everything from scratch. That's just not necessary in 2021. 
There's tons of open source software out there and it's completely okay to take and use bits and pieces that you think will help out your project. And it's also okay if you plan on replacing that in the future, you're just doing this to get something going now. Because here again, if that thing you want to build on your own adds, say, two months to the development time of your project, then that may push you over the scope that you're willing to commit to, and that project will just end up in the unfinished software pile. So perhaps for the coffee bean website, maybe I don't want to roll my own search for coffee beans, and I can just use an open source search tool. And then finally, step six, set a schedule and be diligent about working towards your end goal, and don't add anything that you didn't add in step two. This means sticking to the scope and sticking to the plan. If you know you want to spend two to three months on a project and you know you have two to three hours a day, then stick to that. Do two to three hours per day and eventually it'll get done. Working on something casually for three hours a day for the entire week is the exact same thing as pulling a crazy all-nighter on Friday night with five Red Bulls coursing through your veins. The only difference is in the latter case you're going to get burned out because you're doing too much too quick. And if you followed all these steps, then you've gone from ideation of something new to a small thing that is 100% complete in the time frame that you wanted to work on it in. And hopefully you did so in a way that was both leisurely and enjoyable. So just to summarize the steps again, start by brainstorming the ideas, and then from those ideas, determine an attainable early end goal, then determine the appropriate tech stack for the project you want to do. If the project involves a database, design that schema up front, identify any third-party tools that might help speed up the process, and then finally set an appropriate schedule and be diligent about working towards the end goal that you set in step two. This is the standard process that I've used for all new projects going forward, and it's served me pretty well so far. If you have any questions or feedback about anything that I discussed, please be sure to leave those below in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching.